I'm Ann. And I'm Monica. And this is the episode where we are at a new season here in London. (laughs) And the Bridgerton family. (laughs) Julie Andrews? Is that you? I don't know if I'm trying to do Whistle Down or I'm trying to do the other lady. The what's her name? Lady Danbury. Yeah, she's so funny the way she talks. Yeah, uh, a lot of mouth movement. The, um, your Majesty, if you haven't picked the diamond, it's you. Who has to pick. I don't know what she was saying. Anyways, <laughs> I apologize. It's, they say diamond too. <laughs> They're diamond. Like diamond. Uh, okay, guys, if you could not tell from that um, embarrassing British. Okay, let's right calm there. down. I can. D- I can do a proper British accent. No, I can't. Oh, there it is. I can't. I can't. No. I can't. I, n- I know the British friends are screaming. We have to <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anyone from England watching <laughs> listens to us, so it's okay. Yes. But um, we are going to be covering the second season of Bridgerton. Woo! Woo-woo. And <laughs> it's n- we're not just joined by um, me and Monica this time. We have two special guests. You may remember them from our previous uh, Bridgerton episode. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would like to introduce Dom. Hello. Hello. Hi. <laughs> Hello, governor. <laughs> <laughs> and Alex. Hi, guys. Thanks for having us back. <laughs> okay, she yes. didn't go British. <laughs> no, she, no, she didn't. She didn't. I say we she just do the whole it. episode in a British accent. In a British up. accent? Ooh, the people might click off. <laughs> but <laughs> I think it's entertaining. Yes, we are glad to have you guys back. Um, actually, this is the first time Monica's doing it with um, yes, Dom and I Alex. I missed out but on the... Bridgerton at the first one. I know. <laughs> we don't know your hot takes or anything yet. So this will be like about the first interesting. Season. No, Ooh. we don't. But we will. We will have time to discuss. Don't worry, because you know. Yeah. I'm sure we'll be discussing the way characters have been acting. Mm-hmm. But um, mm-hmm. we're going to be going in a similar fashion that we did with the first episode, the uh, first time that we did this with the season, first season, where we're going to be talking about um, each character going from let's say least relevant to most relevant. Um, and yeah, each of us are going to talk about our thoughts, uh, how we felt about um, each character and their storyline. So let's get right into it. Like, let's not stall, guys. Um, first group, let's say, of characters is Portia Featherington, Prudence Featherington, and Cousin Jack. Cousin, <laughs> Cousin Jack. Jack makes him sound like a baby. <laughs> I know. Literally. Jack Jack from The Incredible. <laughs> oh, fully. So um, I guess I'll get started on what I thought about their storyline what was happening listen it's it's a popular opinion that people think you know the storyline took too much time the storyline specifically um and i i have to agree i think there were some scenes that were happening especially when they were talking about how poor they were i was like y'all are really not that poor though like okay you're eating potatoes every day but like at the end of the day (laughs) you guys are still affluent so yeah they're um, oh my god we're so poor while in a mansion like yeah i don't know (laughs) i don't know it was like hard to connect with that like i felt like they could have done more visual um um what's it called like see show don't tell it was a lot of telling that they're poor but not really um like i think it would have been funnier to see the way portia maybe was like cutting corners to try to make it look like they're not poor like that would have been more interesting to see rather than her them just complaining about it um, I thought it was funny at the beginning when they were trying to get Prudence to be with Cousin Jack, like when Portia mm-hmm. was trying to train her. I thought that was funny. Then when it got into the whole like counterfeit necklace stuff, that's when I kind of lost interest. I was like, oh, I don't really care that much about this. Mm-hmm. Um, but I will say I did like the ending, though, the way Portia um, swindled Mr. Cousin Jack. <laughs> um, into getting out of there, I thought it was a good way to kind of wrap up that storyline because I wouldn't, I guess, I wouldn't have liked to see like some like patriarch taking over their house, you know. Uh, right. So I think it's kind of interesting to see that now they're kind of going to be on their own and um, maybe even like have a race between the the women on who's going to have a son first because I know the son mm. gets the estate. So. Yeah, that's how I felt about that storyline. Mm. So. Yeah, honestly, yeah. I was I, I I I was trying to like skip through their scenes. It was so boring to me. <laughs> like I was just not into it. I was like, okay, like, and I got I found it so weird when cousin Jack started trying to like seduce 
Mrs. Featherington yeah. or whatever oh, yeah. her name is. I was yeah. like, uh, <laughs> this is weird. <laughs> this is so mm-hmm. weird. And like, I don't know. I just, yeah, I was just kind of bored to be honest with yeah. that whole storyline. Like I was getting secondhand embarrassment from Prudence. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah because clearly she was like when am i going to marry him me, 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 me. and it was like so annoying um, that was really good <laughs> <laughs> so i was like okay like yeah basically i could sum it up with what you said i just didn't really care i was like okay mm-hmm. yeah that's all i have to say honestly i just found <laughs> i just got really uncomfortable when cousin jack started trying to like seduce the mrs featherington i was like whoa, wait afraid, whoa whoa yeah. whoa what's going on here um mm-hmm. but yeah pretty much <laughs> yeah. yeah uh dom what are your thoughts yeah so similar sentiments i do think the storyline for the featheringtons cousin jack i thought it was so weird they called him cousin jack as well like it made things very awkward um yeah, not just but no Mr. i <laughs> just call him yeah, cousin jack. yeah i was I know, a like uncomfy but I just love that Portia kept telling Prudence, like, stop calling him Cousin Jack. Like, it was just so <laughs> I awkward. Thought I thought so it was, like, funny. kind of funny. Um, yeah. No, similar sentiments. I do think it went a little long. And then it started to end off with, like, a con. Like, there's, like, a con running as well in the show, aside from just Whistle Down. So I thought if there's a lot going on there. But mm-hmm. I do like Portia. And I think... I don't know if Alex agrees because I remember us messaging about this a little her. while ago. But we <laughs> love Portia. Like she is, she's a mama bear. She cares about her daughters. She wants them to do well. Obviously, they're not as poor as they make themselves out to be seen. But I think in terms of society, they mm-hmm. they see themselves as like being the poorest. So um, in terms of the storyline, though, I think it could have picked up a little bit more. Or um, we see a bit more dramatics a little bit with Lord Featherington. Or this new Lord Featherington. But I think it would have been better if he ended up with Cressida. And then there was drama with that. I think that would have shaked up the storyline a little bit more, in my opinion. But yeah. But Alex, what do you think? I have a similar opinion to you, Dom. But you know what? Cressida Cowper, she's going to see her day. um, But hopefully not anytime (laughs) soon. Um, But I also really like Portia and Loki, the Featherington as a family um portia Mm -hmm. like you said she is like the epitome of i support women's rights but i also support women's wrongs (laughs) yeah she she is pretty vindictive and like she like veers into the like evil and spiteful territory for sure but Mm -hmm. like it was satisfying the way she got cousin jack at the end and it was like um yeah pack your pack pack your stuff and go and i'm still keeping this money i was like okay work we support that um (laughs) and i did find it hilarious whenever they called him cousin jack and how it just like aggravated portia (laughs) stop calling him that that was amazing um as far as prudence yeah i I will be happy to um not see her be like such a main character moving forward i guess but with Mm -hmm. penelope's sisters like i think it's important for the show that they kind of stay to that like cinderella um storyline where the sisters are kind of like these bratty sometimes lovable idiots um so like i I saw the entertainment value in that um but for me like portia is the most interesting one from that family like um, as far as like the featheringtons being poor i also would have liked to see Anne. like maybe if the staff just like up and quit like we kind of got all these hints that like they were not doing well like they were veering towards financial crisis but it was like Mm -hmm. they're they're still stepping out into the social scene they are still um being waited on by i can't remember the like housekeeper's name but lady vera oh or something, she, yeah. she's also kind of funny i <laughs> yeah. i also appreciate her um but yeah i think with the featheringtons it's like it's not that they're necessarily poor like they're, they're in trouble but i feel like the more mm. it's more like that they're cheap like especially compared to mm, the bridgertons yeah. that like they are just like this like knockoff and like trying to reach like the upper echelons of society but one another thing to defend queen portia i thought that she like had some respect for the bridgertons like as much as she was kind of satisfied when the scandal got out like when they were like oh you cannot touch the bridgertons with this uh 
ruby scheme i was like okay work like she doesn't want to see them like lose any money she really you think so that's what i thought at first i was like oh she really admires them like Mm. she she wants to be them so bad and she's like these are good people we're not screwing them over and then eventually when she was like all right bring colin bridgerton in i was like no so yeah yeah i don't know i'm excited to see what portia does next um Mm -hmm. glad cousin jack is heading back to america though yeah yeah yeah. no i thought she was doing it because they had already messed with the bridgertons already so she's like i can't do this again so go for the other people oh maybe. yeah i think it could be a little bit of both they're probably all of the combined but um yeah well, I, I think we'll definitely see. They they do love to give them uh, screen time, so I'm sure we'll see. I will say more though, of them. I will say though, like the one thing that I didn't like about the storyline, and I don't know if this is yeah. from the books. I don't know who up criticizing the author or the the show people, but I just like this it's is not from this the is the nitpicky, books. but like I just hate the whole trope of I guess like I guess it's kind of like the miscommunication trope where it was like oh, this person actually had, like, a secret plan all along, but he just didn't want to say anything, whatever. Like, you know how his whole plan was to marry oh, Cressida? Yeah. yeah. Um, whatever. I was just like, ugh. Like, that's so annoying. Like, why? You couldn't have said anything? That like, you couldn't so have mad. literally just been like, bro, I'm trying to marry Cressida so you guys can have some money. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you had no reason to lie to them. Like, I don't get it. So I was just like, that yeah, was annoying. Yeah, was just, he was shady from the get-go. I was like, okay, like, yeah. <laughs> like, man. you could literally just be like, hey, look, I don't have that much money, so let me marry someone like rich and then we'll be set yeah like it's so easy like aren't you trying to scheme your little plan like isn't Portia a little schemer you guys could work together Mm -hmm. it would have been so easy like i just don't like that trope yeah Yeah, i I get that no none of the featherington storylines are like in the books at all so like you can just like most of them are not so you can default to the fact that it's usually probably not a thing like Portia's Mm -hmm. character is like like being so schemy and conniving and all that stuff that's not from the books like that's very much like a a show invention so yeah you can you can definitely like assume that's the case um okay second person or second person slash group we're going to is benedict bridgerton so i feel like this might be he okay he was cute this season like he was fun he brought the laughs that he needs to bring but I only enjoyed Benedict when he was interacting with the other Bridgertons. I thought whatever it was, say, like, I feel like mm-hmm. he's more relevant than Portia and, like, and Jack and whatever. Like, like more irrelevant. Yeah, irrelevant? I don't know. I feel yeah, like, yeah. If you ask me anything that he did this season, I was like, I don't know. He went to art school. Art school. Like, <laughs> I'm then, so sorry. When he was talking with Anthony, loved it. When he was talking with Eloise, loved it. Yeah. When he was high at the table, hilarious. But as soon as like. He was taken away from the Bridgerton like household and we mm-hmm. were going to his own stuff. Very uninterested. Especially that stuff with the model. I was like, ugh, whatever. It like, was just so like, <laughs> I'm an artista. I need to do yeah, my like, artist things. Like, and I find okay. it so weird what they're doing with him because like last season, I felt like they just threw him with Madame Delacroix, Delacroix like out of nowhere. And right. I felt like that was the same thing with this model. Like it's like, I, I get they're trying to like show because eventually he's going to get his own season whether it be next or not. I don't think it's going to be next, but mm-hmm. let's just whatever. Um, and I get that they're trying to be like, oh, like he's, you know, I probably like trying to get him some experience first. Um, but I think it's just like, I don't need to see that. Like, just, yeah, like I'm sure he sleeps with women. Like, <laughs> and next. Yeah. Like, I don't, I don't. I'm pretty sure his story is watch. next. So I, maybe that's why they felt it like they had to keep books. him in the loop. Well, I think they're following the books be honest no so shonda oh. rhymes did say specifically um in like an interview that they're not necessarily doing that mm, i so see. we don't know we don't know. but the other siblings are still kind of young so like i guess i don't know i know i feel like it would make more but sense some people are like he's like they old, might old. do a time jump some people think that well the, like, i know the books have time jump. jumps but like they can't go yeah. 10 years in the future this guy's gonna be like 50 not no wife like you know what i mean like no but i think eloise is probably 18 now yeah i don't know i think so i don't know i just I yeah know. i feel like he was just like he was just there you know yeah he's just there and he's like i'm an artist i have to do my <laughs> art <laughs> and then i was like okay and then yeah like i think his <laughs> best moments were when he was helping anthony like that was when i was <laughs> yeah like, oh, well like, I'm, I, I think i'll mention it later i guess but my opinions might yeah. seem very bland now but that's because when we get towards the end with the more important characters you'll understand why 
all these yeah, other actually, characters actually. and storylines were so boring <laughs> to me <laughs> to, because there's a there's a winner winner chicken well, yeah chicken because there's there clearly some storylines that were much better than yeah the other side stories that i've just completely sure. overshadowed it so yeah i just found benedict like he was just there you know yeah he was just there to um be there. yeah dom and alex what do you guys think yeah, um, Benedict, big fan. I thought he was so funny. Oh, I, sorry. I, I said, <laughs> I think like, like ripping into um, <laughs> you're like, oh. Um, I said this, I, I remember in the last episode too, I loved his relationship with Eloise. I feel like yeah. we didn't get to see as much as that um, for this season, just because he was at the Arts Academy or whatever it was called. I can't actually remember. Um, but I felt kind of bad for him when he finds out that his brother actually paid for him to get in and then he's like mm. has like an existential crisis for his like art <laughs> and everything i actually like that piece but i so i do like benedict i i don't know how much i can go on about him but i will say that i think next season should be about eloise i don't think they built up benedict's storyline enough for him to go next yeah, um i'm more cu- yeah i'm way more curious about eloise not only with theo like that relationship there i i've I know with the books, like, she'll probably end up with somebody else. Um, but, like, I do want to see what happens, especially since she just dodged um, the whistle with the queen with Whistledown. And then, mm-hmm. obviously, we, we'll talk about the Penelope situation. Stuff but when we get there, that's yeah. when we get there. But, no, I, I do really like Benedict. I wish I saw more scenes of him and Eloise. But I do agree, um, Anna Monica, that... I think when he was with the Bridgertons is when he was like at his best. When he was away, yeah. he couldn't really, he wasn't strong on his own. And I think they really need to work on that for the next season before he gets his own. Because sure. if it's about him, mm-hmm. we got to like what we're seeing, right? So, yeah. Um, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, that's totally fair. I didn't really think about how like he kind of fell flat when he wasn't with his siblings. But now looking back after you guys said that, I was like, yeah, I too cannot really remember anything from the art school and like the relationships <laughs> that he has had with like um, exterior characters like Madame Delacroix and I don't even remember the name of the woman that he sleeps with. I at, swear they didn't at, even give it. Yeah, to her. I don't like, know. Like, probably not. But yeah, that's the thing is I'm like, uh, like what was the point of those? Like those were giving right. those were giving nothing. And I, I don't know if you were like alluding to this Anne, but I feel like a lot of the fans are like, um, no, Benedict is gay or Benedict is bi. Yeah, yeah. So then, no, they yeah. really alluded to that in yeah. the first season. So, they did, and then they're like, they keep throwing us these like random mediocre women, and I'm like, what? okay, make one of them a man then, please, <laughs> at least. No, for I think real. that would make him more interesting, to be honest. Like, for sure, for sure. Yeah, I don't know. I just, I, I see where you're going. I think that the studio is like, okay, what we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure it looks like he can have a relationship with a woman because he's had two in the past and he is like super goofy and like typical like middle child or like second born like oh he doesn't have to Mm -hmm. kind of um have this burden of like being the head of the family but i'm curious because i really like him but at the same time i'm like okay how is he gonna carry a season because anthony Mm -hmm. really carried the season and i'm like Benedict, I don't know what's going to happen for him. I really like him as a character. I really love him and Eloise, all their scenes together. I like the Bridgerton brothers. I think they're really funny. Aww, but, yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know how that's going to work out. So I think they're they're going to spend time building him. Um, I also don't they think must. he's going to get next season lead, but we'll see. No, I don't think so either. Um, which kind of maybe goes into the next person that we're going to talk about, because this is another potential person mm. that they think that might get the third season too i could see this i don't think so either third season but but maybe who knows okay we're gonna be talking about colin bridgerton listen if if (laughs) y'all remember how i felt about him in the first podcast (laughs) Mm -hmm. i was rooting for my boy i was like colin is my friend how the mighty have fallen okay (laughs) how the tables have turned fallen off a cliff like Uh, uh, it's okay this is not even and like we'll talk about this later this has nothing to do with how he talked about penelope at the end because i think that's a big thing that a lot of people um are not fans of Mm. i wasn't a fan of that i don't even like pulling penelope that much but i was like bro what like yeah (laughs) yeah yeah. i don't but we'll we'll talk about that in a minute but i didn't even even throughout the beginning he was giving like 
wah wah. <laughs> like, <laughs> he was like, like that sound the effect is literally season. what his character is. <laughs> yes. He was like Eeyore, but like not even charming. Okay? Like, oh it, at least God. in the first season, he was like sweet. He was making jokes. Do, I remember because I watched the first season pretty quickly, like uh, right before the second season. There was a scene literally where Violet had drank too much at the ball and Colin was the one bringing her home. And she's like, Colin, I'm not drunk. And she's like, yeah, he's like, yeah, mom, like, I believe you. And they're like, literally like laughing, giggling. And then um, Anthony was about to go duel freaking Simon. Oh, my God. And he looks at Colin and, and he's like, Colin, I need you here. And then Colin's like, what? Did someone die? Like, where's the, where's the, where's the, where's this? Where's this? Like, yeah. I don't know how else to explain it. Like, he had juice last season. I felt for him because he was fun and loving and like really chill but he also was kind of stupid for getting you know bamboozled so i enjoyed his like plot line in the first season a lot and i really felt for him as a character Mm -hmm. in this one he was literally spending half the time like emotionally dumping on penelope being like i don't know what my purpose is and then then they tried to like make him involved in my least favorite storyline, yeah, <laughs> the whole yeah. part. So it's like they really took him, and like I would have said, sorry, I'm rambling, but I would have said from first season that if they wanted to do Colin as the third season, I would have been a hundred percent down, like just based off the first season, because I would have been like, oh, they'll probably do something with him in the second season, and then it'd be really interesting for him to do like in the third season what would happen with that, right? But they've somehow, like, regressed him. Like, Mm -hmm. they've made him even less appealing as a character than they did before. Like, uncharmed him. Like, I don't... I don't even know how to explain. Like, his... Even the scene with, um... Marina. Oh God, that was the yeah. worst. That was rough. Okay, <laughs> so much second hand from him. Yeah, it was, yes, it was just second hand. I was like, Colin, what do you want her to do? You want her to run away with you? Like, leave her two twins? She's literally there and with children or husband, and he's like, oh, yes. <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm like, this is recency era. There's no such thing as divorce. Like, what are you talking about, bud? Like, what? It, what did you want her to do? Okay, one, two. It was just like it was just awkward. Like, I just. Ugh. And also, I know I'm not supposed to talk about this because technically we're supposed to talk about it later, but I have to address him and Penelope because, <clears throat> yeah, what am I going to do? <laughs> I felt I already don't like Penelope, if people don't know that. Me neither. I don't I don't I don't really think she's that charismatic as a character herself and her actions are hard for me to justify. However, even in the first season, I could feel a little bit of like what she saw in Colin and like what that was about this season was cringe on cringe on cringe on cringe like every time she was looking at him with her unrequited eyes of love it was it was scary for me I was like what what is what are we doing here because this man is just talking about how I guess sad he is and she's just like yeah Colin it was just it was I was uncomfortable I didn't I don't know how else to say that yeah second I felt like they had no chemistry Mm-hmm. even as friends like i felt like in the first season they were like funny like they were talking i don't know there was like a scene where they were at the ball making fun of like a baby who was crying and it was i was like oh i could see how these people are friends <laughs> in the second season allegedly they've been sending letters back and forth but to me i couldn't even tell you that these two people are friends like it mm-hmm. felt very much like Mm, like I don't know like you've been talking to her for hours in letters but then you still have to explain to her what happened to you in Greece like what See, were y'all talking that's about? what I was gonna say I was gonna say that I think they should have pushed the letters more like I think yes. they should have highlighted that more than what they were trying to do I don't know I, yeah I just found his thing so weird where it was like he was just like oh my my travel my purpose <laughs> and then they're just I feel like every character I'm just like imitating them complaining about something but like it was like yeah. They tried at first to make him be like, oh, he just came back from his trip. So he's so obsessed with his trip. And then it was like, I don't even know. Yeah, I felt his storyline to be it's, a little bland. As yeah, well. it was. And just like embarrassing. And, he was and like, mm-hmm. yeah, no. And I think if they had focused more on the letters, like they, if they showed him being more like tormented by the fact of like, well, Penelope's my friend, but like, I don't know. We were sending these letters to each other and it was like mm-hmm. all this stuff. And he was like, like, torm- like, and then I think like even referring the to the letters like as an inside yeah, joke. But then I think at yeah. the end it could have maybe like made more sense if like if he's having that inner tor- turmoil of like 
I don't know, she's my friend, but like, am I feeling something more for her? And then he just like, you know, like fucking in some movies where some guys are like so rejecting of the idea of like, I could maybe have feelings for this girl that they just go completely opposite and like start insulting her yes. instead. Then I feel like at the end, him like being like, oh, I could never be with her would make a little bit more sense because you could already see that he's having that inner turmoil or whatever, which inner I feel like would have set agree, up the, the season better. You know what I mean? But they kind of just right? made him all bleh and then he's like, man, and then da, 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 and then he's like, ah, fuck you, Penelope. And I'm like, where did that even come from? <laughs> <laughs> like what the right it was just like t- too much and i felt like he was taking care of his daughter like what he said yeah, like I don't even you're know, special man. to me and then he literally goes i would never like it just uh, made no sense what? and i was like i'm was embarrassed <laughs> yes it was just <laughs> okay but yeah sorry <laughs> dom and alex if you don't <laughs> have the same opinion i'm so sorry no I'm that so was right. awesome that was awesome. Um, yeah, total cringe moments with Colin. It sucks though too because I really liked him in the first season. I still like him actually. I'm not gonna lie to you. Like, I'm still yeah. rooting for him. I think they could have done more with him this season, but I'm okay with this. I, I'm. I think they're gonna build on this for us. Um, I think it's okay to like have a morally ambiguous character at times too, where we're like we don't know where we stand with them, and then they shock us or surprise us in the next season. Um, but can we address like him going to see Marina? Marina left him like oh, no crumbs. Like she, <laughs> yeah, she, it's she true. like she's not he's having like, it. She's like, and she's like, <laughs> oh god, he was like, I'm sorry if I offended you. She's like, I'm not offended, and I don't need your apology. <laughs> oh god, yeah, I, I was, was like, like, get out of there, Colin. <laughs> like, get out of there. I'm like, That's okay, so and I was like, like I don't care. <laughs> I was like, do not stay for dinner. <laughs> do not stay for dinner. <laughs> oh, that was rough. And then I'm not going to lie. I, I'm the uh, same as Anne, uh, Monica, and Alex. I am not the biggest fan of Penelope. We'll talk about that a little later on. Mm. But I felt bad for her in a couple moments. One of them was when he said that he doesn't see her as a woman. He sees her as a friend. I was like, oh, oh that was so oh. bad. That was rough. That was rough. <laughs> that was rough. I was like, yeah, she got friends. But also, me. Also, she like, oh, kind of she kind of asked for it though, because I was like, Penelope, what do you mean? I am a woman, <laughs> babes. What did you think he was gonna say? Oops, just oh, not man. you. Like, what? What was the answer gonna be? You oh, know. Like, God, they're yeah, just, no. their relationships a mess. Anyways, <laughs> I don't like it. Yes, yeah, they this season they it was a missed opportunity to build on their chemistry. I think like if mm-hmm. they I wanted, that's what I'm like, saying. Yeah, where if they showed more of that regressed. turmoil, yeah, if they showed more yes. of that turmoil and being like, oh, you know, like all these letters, like she was just like, almost like I see her in a different light. They could have they could have spiced it up a little, you know. Yeah. Sh- oh, for sure. Yeah. So like that's where I stand with Colin for the most part. Just sort of like they could have done better. He needs to be better. Um Do better. Yeah. When he started getting involved with the Featherington plotline, I'm like, Colin, stop. Go back to Marina's. <laughs> go like, home. I'm like, yeah. I'm like just. <laughs> <laughs> like, I go back to like, I go, <laughs> back, go back go back go back I'm like go back to Marina like if they wanted to build something with that that would have been probably kind of fascinating if they he had to tr- he was trying to get back into Marina's good graces and work that out or you something like, like, I, feel like I, I could be down but I feel like that would have been better to to at least like because I think part of why I can't I'm not on board with Penelope is what she did to Marina right, so I right. thought maybe they were gonna try to do some redemption arc where like Penelope ends up going to her and like you know maybe like I don't know something with that because why else bring her back but they were like nah she's just gonna be rude to Colin and he's gonna <laughs> well, run away I, like if we well, want I anything to Sir Philip right to maybe yeah get a little Sir bit Philip. of him but yeah that's probably why too yeah yeah well if we want anything from Penelope this girl does not care for anyone's forgiveness like she <laughs> just goes she just goes for it um but no Alex what do you think about Colin yeah I also was Team Colin. He was so cute. Season one, <laughs> adorable. Goes on his little um, gap year to Greece. And we're like, okay, he's going to have a great time. Comes home. Gap year? <laughs> none, of, none of his siblings care. They don't want to hear oh, a single they really thing don't. about it. <laughs> Literally, even, even Hyacinth was like, that's enough. Bye. Um, <laughs> he came back and they were like, oh, you're here. They actually okay. like, hate him low key this season. Like, they're like, ew, Colin. No. Versus he was like their favorite brother before. Literally, yeah. they're like, we hate your dirt stash. We don't want to hear about your travels. Oh my God. <laughs> like, well, he's literally enough. like that friend that like goes abroad one time and then comes back and it's like, oh my God, guys, I'm so sorry. Like, I'm still on Paris yes. time. Like, bonjour. Yeah. Oh my God, I'm so sorry. The French just <laughs> no, looks out right now. Like, <laughs> literally, he is, he so is that man. Um, but yeah, I think Colin, he made some bad choices this season. 
I thought it was interesting how you guys said he's like a morally ambiguous character because season one he was all about the morals like when he is. when yeah. the thing happens with uh, Marina and she's exposed and like tries to con him like he tells her if you had just told me your situation I would have have married you anyways and I was like oh my god oh, you are so pure mm-hmm. of heart mm-hmm. we love Colin so wholesome. And then this season, it's like, he's like, okay, again, don't love Penelope, but he's like, how, like, how hard can I kick her into the ground? Like, (laughs) (laughs) it makes no sense. He's like, let me just cut down this woman's confidence, which is already not there. Um, And yeah, it just, it didn't make sense. It was inconsistent with his character. Well, yeah, I agree with you. Well, like I said, it would have made sense if they had shown more of that inner turmoil if that was the reasoning where he's like oh he's struggling because he doesn't know how he feels but they just kind of brushed that aside and we're like nah he's just gonna be an asshole for no reason yeah well and apparently he's not very nice in the book so i don't know if like Mm -hmm. that's that's how they're trying to um showcase him now um to like get people ready for that story and like maybe he is kind of a jerk but i'm like oh interesting i don't get how you can come back from that you know what i mean like how are they gonna make me feel romantic the next season when was like yeah you called me but this is ugly like you know okay (laughs) to to be fair though with anthony like Mm -hmm. i i could not even listen to our last episode because i knew i was just like trash talking that man probably <laughs> and now i love him so I, yeah exactly. yeah i know so I'm like, we'll the, talk the more about is, anthony later but yeah you know they can really work some magic um that's true that's true but yeah colin like i think Anna and i talked about this a little bit but when he's at the ball and talking about penelope with all of his friends i was like okay what if we didn't see like the full quote like what if he finishes it up by being like oh i could never be like so lucky to have her or something like that but i'm like no he really he really is just like throwing some like cruel insults and like Mm -hmm. like really putting her in the friend zone um but yeah i think colin also might need a little bit of time um to mature we'll see but i i feel like i feel like they're gonna be the next season so you think so so some people think that i think so too some people think they're gonna do eloise and them Mm -hmm. together at the same time which i'm like that's Mm -hmm. crazy yeah Yeah, but i don't know if i'm down for that Mm -mm. I wouldn't like that at all either. I don't think that's going to happen, but some people theorize that. Um, just to your comment about the books, Alex, like how Colin's personality is. Um, I haven't read his book, but um, from like what book fans are saying, oh, Benedict's personality is more similar to like in the show is more similar to how Colin is in the books. So Colin's actually like of like a very flirty guy. He's like making fun like he likes to like, you know, Sneaky. Like, you know, poke people and be like kind of, I don't know, snarky a little bit like that. Mm-hmm. That's more how Colin is. And he's like, like actually in the book of like the Viscount who loved me, Colin is like the one like always pushing Kate and Anthony together like as a joke because he knows that like his brother hates and you know what I mean by hate. Yeah. But hates <laughs> Kate. So he like always tries to get them to get together. Like he like, you know how he threw the ball or he like, what's it called? Hit her ball into the forest like in the book he really did like really pushed it like that way like he was really like oops i put your balls together again like my bad (laughs) don't say that (laughs) that sounds weird oh my gosh (laughs) oops Oops but yeah he yeah he was really like that like in the book so he's way more playful and like chill i would say in the book versus now in this i would say in the show he's more well he's inconsistent what we don't know what he is in the show right now so but that's, that's why i feel like they're that. gonna do him next season though because i feel like they're gonna fix that up really like get that yeah. like get us to understand him better maybe um i would like that but i i like colin from season one like i just feel like this was a different colin i just don't that's know. what i'm saying yeah, i think they're gonna give him the next him. season to like redeem him hopefully yeah oh, that's what i want at least <laughs> I, I yeah I also think he's a good he's a good character but um we'll talk more even more I'm sure about his implications when we get to um who his likely love interest would be for that season anyways yeah okay um fourth group we're gonna be grouping Lady Danbury uh, Violet Bridgerton and Mary all together um, mm-hmm. because they're the mamas of this of this season. Um, we could also add the queen in there, like side side note. But, yeah. Um, pretty much. Um, <clears throat> interesting. I really enjoyed that 
Lady Danbury was sponsoring the girls this season. I thought that was a smart way to do that. That actually doesn't happen in the books. Like, she's not that involved in the books mm. at all. So I thought it was a smart way to get her involved. I also really like that, she, like, what she, the conversations she would have with Kate up to a certain point. Mm-hmm. I, I liked the beginning <laughs> conversations. I liked when she was telling her, like, stop, like, you know, pushing people away or, like, being, like, cold because you think you want to be alone. Like, you need to, like, you know like live life a little bit before you decide exactly um and i think that's fine too because like she could tell that's not what kate wanted because it's fine if people want to be alone you can decide that whatever you want but it was kind of clear that that's not exactly what kate was doing she was kind of self-sabotaging so i did like those like um speeches that lady danbury uh did honestly all the moms were speeching is, is basically mm-hmm. what i'm saying i mean danbury's mm-hmm. not but lady danbury be speeching to kate at the beginning when she had to tell her off and i like that i really love that um violet when she had to get and honestly everybody together she had to get anthony together she had to talk to danbury to be like i'm I'm gonna get my son fixed but we we learned a lot more about violet this season like from a different yeah i was gonna say pov i like violet this season i thought it was really interesting to see how actually how she could have more of a i don't want to say villain but like not a villain like a less like angel angel angelic like view i think like because daphne and her in season one were so close like daphne Mm -hmm. honestly is her favorite kid let's be real (laughs) and like she she like she's like oh my daughter is gonna find love and she was like really encouraging daphne to like go after simon because she's like oh i want you to have the love that i had and it was very like rose colored glasses but to see anthony's view of his mom made her even more of a dynamic character to me which i really yeah. enjoyed yeah that's I, what i meant like i, I liked her character like just the, right. the layers we got i, I liked it exactly a lot like she was a lot more because interesting i felt to me. yes i felt like in the first season i was like yo queen like when she told anthony off but then now that i've seen it from this point of view i'm like oh like yeah she does put a lot of pressure mm-hmm. on mm-hmm. her kids mm-hmm. like because uh, daphne got pressure but like it, it's, it's not that bad because she like actually lives up if not more to the potential that Daphne I mean sorry Violet sees in her because she marries a freaking Duke but like with the other kids like even with Eloise and Anthony like the kids who aren't doing what she would want let's say necessarily how they see their relationship with Violet how they still have obviously a loving relationship with her but there's still some a little bit of animosity because it's like we don't understand each other the same way like you see life this way but I've been you know conditioned to see it another way but i thought that was really interesting and it made for a lot of really interesting conversations it made violet like have to get out of her comfort zone a lot which i really really enjoyed and um last person mary i'm actually this is one of the points where i where i kind of am kind of upset with the the show writers a little bit with this i needed way more mary okay Mm because she's like a Mm -hmm. big deal in the books and her scene with uh, Kate at the end where Kate is talking about how she felt like she owed something to Mary because of how she you know took her in like as if it was her own daughter I needed those kind of conversations like way more like mm-hmm. the fact that Kate felt that like burden needed to be way more shown like like the same pressure that we saw that Anthony was given with Violet I needed at least even like a quarter of that to be shown on Kate because I can see that she has that, but they didn't show it enough to me. Like it was a lot of like Mary being like, yeah, my bad. Like I put too much <laughs> pressure on Kate. Like I was like, yo, yo, like and also like the money scheme, for example, how, is Mary closing her eyes when she looks at their books? Because yeah. like, how do you, that can how do you not know? Right. How do you not know that Edwina needs to marry well and that you don't have a dowry for either of your daughters? Like, that's a (laughs) big deal. Like, that's not something you just you just don't implicate. And then when Kate did arrange her thing and she was like, how could you do this, Kate? What do you mean? How could you? Uh, You did. You should have done that. (laughs) If anything. (laughs) I am so sorry. You should be like, damn, I didn't think of this first. Like, I'm running out. And I felt like by my daughter. Right. And it was so weird because I like not to always bring to the books, but I will say that at least in the books, it made more sense. Mary was very aware of like their financial situation. So was Edwina. Like she specifically went into the season trying to find a guy that would like help out her whole family 
um, money wise because she knew that and they knew they only had money enough money to have Edwina in the season like they only had enough money for one dowry and they picked Edwina because she's like you know a hottie so they just <laughs> picked her. You know, we know we know Kate is beautiful but you know whatever they're trying to pretend like it's not, whatever right but yeah so I felt like it made way more sense in the books and Mary was more involved and it made sense versus in this season she, her character is really cool and I can tell but she took on such a passive role. Like there's like literal stretches of time where she's not there. Like yeah. at all. Like for episodes on end. And I thought that was really yeah. really lame. Like I felt like that should have been like fixed. But whatever. That's that's how I felt about that. Yeah. No, I I agree. Like my my thoughts are pretty pretty simple. Like I just yeah, I think Mary, like I liked her as a character. Like I didn't mm-hmm. you know, I liked her because, you know, obviously she cared about her kids a lot. And, like, the fact even that Kate isn't technically her kid, but she took her in, you know, that's really sweet. Yeah. Um, I yeah. do think, though, like, I get why they kept her out of the loop during the season. Like, I get for, like, the big, you know, dramatic reveal, Drama. I guess, mm-hmm. at the end. Like, I get that. And for TV, it kind of translates better to TV if, like, it's, like, a big scheme or whatever. Um, yeah. But, yeah, I agree. Like, I kind of needed more of her being, like, the mom figure type of thing. But... Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and then what I said before with Violet, like I like Violet this season. I feel like I, I I enjoyed seeing her character a lot more. Like I don't know, I don't really remember. I I watched the first season like last when it first came out, so I don't really remember anything about her from the first season to be honest. Besides that, she was the mom. But like this season, I was like more interested in like what she was doing. I was like, okay, like you know, and um, yeah, and then with Lady Danbury too. Like I don't know, I just I like their little trio of like moms mom figure mm-hmm. they're type good. of thing they're they cute little chemistry. so yeah mm-hmm. dom what do you yeah think? um yeah okay i'll start with mary maybe i'll do a mary violet and then end off with lady danbury um so mm-hmm. i agree with everything you're saying about mary i read the book as well as uh similar to Anne, and i loved her character in the book she was very headstrong um disciplinary she was really good with kate Kate was also mm-hmm. a little bit different in the books than she is in the show. It's almost like they switched personalities a bit in a weird way. Yeah. Um, if that's even right to say, because Mary seemed very docile, very like, like you said, passive. I mm-hmm. kind of wish both Mary and Kate were both in on this, like, not con, but both in on the scandal. And of course, Edwina wouldn't know. I kind of would have liked that more instead of Mary just being like, oh my gosh, how could you do this to us? I think that would have been much yeah. more interesting, um, especially with... Yeah, especially with the blame all being put on Kate. Like, Kate's just trying to do right by everyone. I mean, obviously, this was, like, not the right thing. But, like, she was trying to help. And I think having Mary as the adult being, like, oh, Kate did this, but, like, we're going to make this better. I think I would have liked if she was in on it. Um, yeah, but she should have been in on it like Lady Danbury was. Mm-hmm. Oh, abs- of co- oh, absolutely. Like, the three of them were, like, kind of plotting together to figure out how mm-hmm. they were going to make this work. And then Kate has her inner turmoil, uh, which we'll talk about in a little bit. But, um, yeah, so, no, Mary, in terms of as far as, like, the character, she was awesome. In my opinion, I, I liked having Mary on the, like, in the season. I thought her outfits were, she was snatched. Like, she looked great. Um, all the, mm-hmm. all the Sharma's, just, like, family, like, the girls looked great. So that was awesome. Um, Violet, I'm so happy happy we got flashbacks i last season yes. and yeah, last yeah, episode yeah. i remember saying i wanted to see flashbacks of violet like i didn't care what kind we were seeing i just wanted to see them like her like raising the kids like her and her husband um so i was really happy to see that and yes i agree they kind of they villainize her a little bit because we see how much mm-hmm. pressure she puts on antony and we see now how why his relationship with her is actually kind of strained. The Bridgertons yeah. appear to be a very tight knit and close family, but what we're seeing is there's actually a lot of strain between some of the characters. Like, um, we'll talk about this, I guess, when we get to Daphne. But her and Antony don't—they are not close, in my opinion. Like, we'll we'll discuss oh, that. Yeah. But like, I thought they were very strained this season. But um, no, I, I do like that we saw that side of Violet, and of course. Her relationship with Lady Danbury, I, I love those two. Like, that's probably one of my favorite female friendships on the show or of the season. Mm-hmm. So that was yeah. really great to see Violet. And then in terms of Lady Danbury, she's my queen, honestly. Like, her, <laughs> her, her, Violet and the queen were the holy trinity of, like, the show. Yeah. Like, I, like, everything that they were doing, all the plotting that they're doing, it's great because they all have good intentions. But Lady Danbury, my favorite, I think she had some of the best quotes. She had the best parting lines, too. Like, when she tells Kate, um, careful or you will get a chill when they're talking outside. Like, there was so <laughs> much meat. There was so much in that sentence alone. It was definitely not just about the cold. So, like, I, I was a big fan of Lady Danbury. 
I did think it was weird when she invited like the the Sharmas, like the grandparents to the house. The like she yeah, the Sheffields, yeah. yeah. She like I <laughs> was like, What? Girl, what are you doing? <laughs> like there was yeah. just like it was just not a good power move in my opinion. I I panicked for them. So Boo Boo um, the Fool. I get it. Yeah, it was a, it was a little messy. But no, in terms of as far as character goes, I liked all three. I think of those three, mm-hmm. Lady Danbury is still one of my favorites since the first season. But I'll pass it over to Alex as well. 100%. She is supreme. Um, But yeah, Lady Danbury, Violet, and Queen Charlotte are just like the best lady gang ever. Like they they are Mm -hmm. the anchor of the show, I feel at least. Because you're right, like they're used as like the mentor characters kind of. So like Mm -hmm. they dish out like a lot of advice and like, you know, give some hard truths. Um, But I feel like a lot of them have been humbled. Um, So, like, you've seen that they've had to learn how to apologize, especially Violet. Um, And I see what you guys are saying about, like, she she totally was that, like, angelic, like, soft character. Like, um, even how they style her and stuff like that and like do her makeup and like yeah she she's supposed to be mom like and she's supposed to like take care of everyone but you see that she's kind of let a lot of her kids down like um in season one Daphne like gets angry at her and she's like you have like not prepared me in any way to be a Mm -hmm. wife to be a mom like I know nothing about sex I know nothing about running a house like what the hell and then you kind of see the like discord between um violet and eloise this season and how like that gets resolved a little bit like they're like okay we can wait like yeah you you do not need to um be stepping out this season and stuff like that but um yeah i'll be interested to see how they navigate those relationships with her other children because you're i think you're right like she she doesn't really have a relationship with some of them like yeah her Mm -hmm. and colin are kind of jokey but if they if they want to keep her as that like figure to be like um edmund and my relationship was like the pinnacle of love like this is what you want to be searching for and stuff like that i'm like yeah she's gonna need to do some do some bonding with francesca or someone yeah. <laughs> oh <laughs> francesca so <laughs> absent never to be seen um, yeah and i think you guys are right about mary too and how like she's a more passive character like one scene that really stood out to me was when they had the sheffields over for dinner and like she's basically silent the whole time yeah and like you can Mm -hmm. tell she's just like so afraid of her parents but i'm like girl Mm. this was the moment like to kind of stick it to them and i feel like anthony did that more than she did and i was like yeah speak up like come on (laughs) um but yeah i don't know i feel like lady danbury in my opinion can do no wrong and like it is it is a shonda show so like those female characters are like they're just always going to be so important yeah Yeah, for sure okay guys now we're going to move to our um former power duo i'd say of girls (laughs) uh, young girls um eloise and penelope Mm. oof Okay. <laughs> okay. There's a big there's a big debate apparently. I didn't think there would be one, but there's like a whole team Penelope team Eloise thing no, happening on no. Twitter and I was like, Stop. Yeah. <laughs> but whatever. Um just to quickly go over my thoughts. Eloise, I actually which is weird. I enjoyed her more this season than the first season. Mm-hmm. Um Me too. which yeah, I thought she was more fleshed out like i was more i like that she kind of grew up I, I guess i wasn't that into her whole oh i need to know who whistledown is mm-hmm. this time i felt like there was like a better reason like she was like oh like i kind of want to know who whistledown is for like you know um just out of curiosity then it moved out into like oh i want to you know give her some tips which is kind of like <laughs> the audacity but it's funny still mm-hmm. and then it really turns into like no actually Lady Whistledown has like ruined a lot of people's lives and I feel like she needs to atone for her crimes. So that I like the transition of her um, thought process yeah. with that. And I think that is very like coming of agey type of vibe, like to admire something and then slowly be like, actually, like, what does yeah. this actually mean in my life? Um, her relationship with Theo, I'm not going to lie. I was like, I don't I don't like it as much as most people. Maybe I thought it was just like, whatever. Yeah. Um, I didn't. I thought it was like I thought it would have been more useful if they just stayed as a friendship. Like I didn't care for their romance per se. That's what I'll say. Like I think that could have been a slower build up 
you know i don't i know that he's probably not end game at all whatsoever but i think it would have been still more interesting to have him be like a character that she's like friends with and then it's slowly like you know just like i don't know i don't know what i wanted with that but i didn't (laughs) i didn't really care for it that much um yeah Penelope this season okay I went in (laughs) trying to like her because people love her like I was like okay really I didn't know that yeah I don't really look at the conversations online I guess for the show that much well maybe not about Penelope I look at other things but I she's the number one I I don't like favorite character that people say I don't don't. but people love her they say like she's the most relatable huh? et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> relatable <laughs> yeah me? apparently people be be writing columns about people, people. just like destroying their whole communities <laughs> tearing yes, apart yes, families yes. <laughs> okay mm-hmm. <laughs> okay so i did not like her because i thought what she did to marina was atrocious to me yeah. like mm-hmm. i thought it was terrible. i think what she did to like, everybody is a tro- like why yeah, everything I still is don't get is terrible why. I still don't. Yeah, I feel like that needs to be addressed. I thought they were going to kind of try to address it in the season a little bit more to see like what her idea, what the idea behind her whole whistle down thing is. Yeah. But it looks like we were looking more at the operations rather than the reason yeah. why. I'm sure that'll no. come yeah. with her season, um, her and Colin's season, which is probably gonna... anyway. <laughs> um, I thought this whole time I was like, Penn, she was a mess last season to me like it was giving me and i've always said this and people don't like i say i say incel it was giving me incel last <laughs> mm-hmm, season mm-hmm. i'm sorry it's giving i didn't get the guy i want so i'm gonna sabotage uh this girl's livelihood and her twin babies but whatever yep um and then this season it was just actual cringe like i was actually like like i said all the stuff that was happening with colin i literally had to look away from the screen um the stuff with eloise it was insane to see her gaslight eloise oh no i just like, like i just found for, like, yeah. she was just being like oh. snake like oh i don't know like manipulative it was annoying. crazy you know, just like enough like i didn't like her <laughs> first and now like why like i don't know i don't like, I, I don't understand how she's the most loved character to be honest. no i don't get it and it was so i'm so sorry if people like her i'm so sorry but it was so bad it was so bad this season she was lies upon lies sneaking around in her bright colored clothes by the <laughs> yellow <laughs> dress oh god yeah i just find that like i find that her like motives or her like storyline is just very like cheesy and not in a good way to me like it's very much like yeah i'm sorry i did it because i didn't want to hurt like i didn't want to no, 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 no. like you know like how she like had to expose no. eloise to get the queen off yeah. her back i was like come on like really like you know what i mean like i don't like it's, and it was like the worst secret too like I, I did before the season started I speculated I was like hmm I was like either um, what's gonna happen is Penelope is gonna have to write something bad about Eloise because people are gonna be like what's going on like Eloise never gets talked yeah. about but mm-hmm. I expected it to be something like chill like oh Eloise's dress was ugly you know I thought <laughs> yeah. that's yeah. I'm actually not gonna lie I thought she was, I thought gonna, she was gonna, 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 gonna like Eloise is like undesirable that. or like you know yeah. like yes, something like, like that something about hey, her season radicals was a little extreme but yeah like yes. and then like obviously and Eloise would have been mad but like, like that's, that's something forgivable maybe if you're like right? oh I'm, you're undesirable or whatever. but like to literally but expose she, her and almost ruin her family like honestly yes. <laughs> it's not that serious like they literally she almost I don't think people understand she almost ruined her honor babes unchaperoned with on whatever company that's like basically saying that she's damaged goods like that's what that was back then yeah, so yeah that's a big deal a big deal and i know it's like she's a rumor gossip whatever but people take it as Bible. so it's like that's not funny and when she's like i did it for you and always is like no you did it so that you could keep by the way pocketing your money under the floorboard of your poor house yeah okay no your i think she's just a terrible person <laughs> Yeah. about <laughs> potatoes and you have cash on cash on cash cash on, <laughs> on racks under the floorboard i can't i can't i'm sorry no that's what i'm saying um, it's very cheesy like oh but i did it to help you and it's like no you did it to help yourself like i get it it's happened yeah, i'm tired so. of it yeah annoying yeah leave me alone <laughs> Yeah, me and Monica have very clearly the same vibes. Yeah. So we'll let Dom and I would suck. Yeah. If I just don't like Penelope. I like I like Eloise though. I liked her little like I moment. Do. I found that she was kind of annoying in the first season with her little. Oh my god, I need to find out who Whistledown is. Blah, blah, blah. I just found that a little yeah. like eh, like it was a little whiny to me in the first season. But I like where sh- where we took her in the second season. 
Um, like everything she that she did, on her privilege. I like that. Yeah, everything that she that did happened. to me made sense. Like Eloise in the second season, like everything she was doing, I was like, I get that. You know what I mean? Like her getting all radicalized and stuff. I was like, one of them has to. There's like nine of them. One of them <laughs> has to be like the black sheep of the family, I guess. Um, yeah. But like. Yeah, I just felt bad for her. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I just, it was like, mm-hmm. it was so, especially since, I don't know if, it's in the books, do we find out that Penelope is no, you, Lady Whistledown no, that No, you don't find out until See, the fourth. that, book, I, I wasn't like in the first book. episode of Bridges, so I couldn't voice my feelings about this. I didn't like that, personally. I don't like that artistic choice. Um, mm-hmm. Because it just, it makes every other scene with Penelope just seem so annoying because it's like, you know that she's little Lady Whistledown and she's just lying to everybody. I, I personally don't like watching that but that's just me like it's just like when i see like eloise and her always being together and like eloise is like like still like counting on her as like a close friend or whatever and you know that penelope's behind the scenes like you know on her little 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 pen and paper like he he, like i'm ruining everybody's (laughs) life it's just like (laughs) oh like it's so like it's just frustrating because it's like i don't i shouldn't know that she's laid the whistle down yet like i don't know that's my opinion on that Mm. but yeah 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 I, Dom and Alex, what are you thinking? yeah so eloise i i've liked her since the first season i really really liked her this season as well um and mm-hmm. you said it very right like she grew up a lot her her, yeah. her purpose and her pursuits have changed she's still that rebellious daughter she'd still rather read and go exploring than like be in society but i do appreciate that like I liked seeing her try, even though she wasn't actually trying. I found it very humorous. And also, I just mm-hmm. like her vibe. I like a really strong female character. I like when they're a little, they're indifferent. I also like when they go against the norm, too. So I thought Eloise really brought that. I do like that she checked her privilege a few times this season. It wasn't just, mm-hmm. like, she's actually mm-hmm. understanding now that, like, um, yes, like, she's in a better place in society, even though she's a woman, than a lot of other people. So I think that she actually yeah. sees that, which was great. And... Um, it sucks though too because Eloise had probably one of the best like female friendships, but well, we all know it's like a lie, kind of. Well, maybe it's not all a lie, but she had one of like the best like dynamics with another female character. I love that she had a friend. Like that was a big mm-hmm. thing that I was upset about with Daphne last season is that she didn't have like I know that you need it to have a female best friend, but I I really like when you characters do, have, have <laughs> yeah I really you do though, and I really liked I really like that about Eloise, and I think. Yeah, Penelope did her dirty. But no, I have nothing bad to say about Eloise. I thought she was great. In terms of her relationship with Theo, yeah, Theo was kind of meh. I was like, he's just there. It was cute. Like, yeah. you know, she's starting to get a crush, like trying to explore the that. Dating siblings are dating, sorry. Yeah. Oh my God. No, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But um, but no, I, I think that it'd be interesting to see what Eloise ends up with. I'm more so interested in like how things get repaired between her and Penelope. But in terms of Penelope, listen, someone needs to go and snap her quills like someone needs to take her ink away like rip her papers like she is so evil <laughs> like i can't like and it's not um, even evil in like a cool way where it was like oh my god this, no like, the cool. it's an evil in like no. a shut up <laughs> like you <Yeah>. know <laughs> she's not like she's not even like anti-hero no or, anything. or it's like you know sometimes a villain everyone's like ah like you know like the i support women's wrongs thing you know what i mean it's not even that it's like i just no. you're just annoying yeah you are no, because, yeah. i think it's because she's like also scamming women like yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah. Be scamming like other the men right and I'm like, you know <laughs> the people that need yeah. to be scammed <laughs> yeah no, she, I, she ruins women's lives more than anybody else let's be real honestly like, well it's giving internalized misogyny if, if you ask yeah me. well and that's what i mean like she's definitely well we all know penelope is like a pick me girl for sure like oh, exactly <laughs> and exactly. then using and then using whistle down like i don't even know what her purpose is like i was curious about the operation in like the last episode of the first season like I wanted to know is she working with other people what is the deal here how is she getting all her intel when she can't be everywhere at once and I thought we were going to see some purpose like she was wrong something happened with her family like we she experienced something or saw something and it's changed her trajectory but no we just saw her and the modiste uh, Lady Delacour like just sneaking around and yeah she was wearing bright yellow sneaking around (laughs) so I'm like of course the modiste saw you and she's like so so did you um see anything? Yeah, girl, we saw you. We saw you. <laughs> we saw yeah, your red on curls. Her accent was gonna do something I know. like. I know. <laughs> she thought her cloak with her very like her cloak would cover her. We saw everything. So. Right? Um, Oh man, but no, inter- yeah, no, Penelope, I am not a fan. There were moments where I thought I was going to sympathize with her, 
But then she really did Eloise dirty. And I think the only way for her to truly repair that relationship, and um, I was saying to Anne and Alex, Monica, that she needs to like save her life or do something so big <laughs> that, that I like, agree with. I agree. yeah, for like, real. Like she's like or like drowning in her she own saves life her. or something. Like literally, yeah. Like, say tell everyone you're really to whistle down and bear the consequences of that, and literally be shunned mm-hmm. from society. Yeah, and then maybe I would forgive. Oh, ag- agreed. Like she's got to do something like beyond herself, like so big. Um, but the thing is, though, is like I don't even know if Eloise would even care at this point because she's like ruined her, and there's That's so much true. that has to be prepared now. But I'll pass it to Alex. I feel like Alex has thoughts about Penelope <laughs> as well. I do. Like again. I didn't mind Penelope as much in season oh. one. Like, you could clearly tell it's like, she's got some issues, she's the little sister, doesn't really get included in stuff. I thought her friendship with Eloise was really endearing. And then this season, um, yeah, I also don't like that we know that she's Lady Whistledown. And I know that there's mm-hmm. a lot of comparisons with Gossip Girl. But it's yeah. like, we don't, we don't find out that Dan is Gossip Girl until the last season, literally yeah. like the second last episode. And I do agree with Monica. I feel like I watch the show differently knowing that Penelope is whistled down and just like making these reckless decisions uh, mm-hmm. for her own benefit. Um, yeah. But yeah, I was also really hoping to see more of like the business side of things. And I kind of thought that because her father had died, which... You know what? I feel like this man is alive out there and we will see him again. <laughs> I, I thought that because, like, man of the house was gone, they have no money, I thought Penelope was going to, like, kind of step up. step up for them. Especially now that we the audience knows that she's supposed to die. It's like, okay, well, she could clue her mom in on that secret. Or, like, even if she just wanted to be like, hey, I got the funds. Like, it's okay. We'll take care of things. And I feel like at some point, that's going to be a part of the conversation i could kind of see portia like just finding the money and like doing penelope dirty and like spending it on like a ball or something (laughs) and like Mm -hmm. penelope is going to be like my life savings but um yeah her character motivations are pretty interesting because it's hard as a viewer being patient when you can like maybe suss out that like they're painting her in this light because we're supposed to see the character development like when Mm. she becomes the lead like we're gonna get that transformation i'm dying to know what is gonna be her character color because they're gonna get rid of the yellow for sure i feel like they need they need to yeah they really do (laughs) they should (laughs) what what dresses Mm -hmm. are they gonna put her in like how are they gonna sell her as the lead but she's just like so deeply insecure i said this to dom and ann but like the amount of times I flag where she's like, are you making fun of me? Like, she just cannot take a compliment if anyone mm-hmm. is ever like, oh, you look mm-hmm. really pretty. Or like, I love your dress. She's like, okay, like, surely this is a joke. Um, and yeah, like, I, I don't understand how her and Eloise will prepare things. And I think that if they're on the outs and Colin is meant to be her love interest and if Colin and Penelope are supposed to be season three like that's their season I'm like this is not gonna end well if like perfect opportunity I guess for like Penelope to like sneak in and like cozy up to Colin because Eloise isn't there but <laughs> I, I don't yeah she she made some choices mm-hmm. this season that I do not vibe with no